Hello and welcome to this video on kinetics. Today we'll be looking at rate equations and rate determining steps. On the screen there is a rate equation for a reaction involving reactants M and N. A rate equation shows the reactants that are involved in the rate determining step, which is always the slowest step of a reaction. The numbers that are raised to the power are the orders of the reactants. This tells you how many molecules of each reactant is involved in the slowest step. If you add these together, you get the total order for the reaction. Rate equations are always determined experimentally and the rate constant K is always written as a lowercase. Here are some experimental values showing concentrations of different reactants and the initial rate that was achieved using these concentrations. To calculate the rate equation, you must look at the concentrations of each reactant in turn, keeping the others constant. By doubling the concentration of a reactant, you can then look at what happens to the rate. If the rate doubles, then this is first order. If the rate doubles twice, then it's second order. If doubling the concentration has no effect on the rate, then we say that the reaction is zero order with respect to that reactant. If we have a look at these concentrations for a reaction between A, B and C to give us products, if we look at A, we need to consider experiments 1 and 2, as B and C are both held constant at 1 mole per litre, where A doubles from 1 to 2. When A doubles from 1 to 2, the initial rate also doubles. So this would tell us that the order with respect to A is 1. For B, we're looking at experiments 1 and 4, where A and C have been held constant and B doubles. When you double the concentration of B, it has no effect on the rate, so the order for B would be zero. And then finally for C, we're looking at experiments one and three. The rate doubles twice from 20 to 80, so the order with respect to C is two. If we look at writing the rate equation for this reaction, we'll have rate equals the rate constant multiplied by the concentration of A. Concentration of B is raised to the power of 0 and C to the power of 2. We can simplify this to be rate equals K multiplied by A and C to the power of 2. We need to be able to calculate the rate constant and the units associated with it. If we use the rate equation that we have just calculated as rate equals k times a times c squared and if you put in the values from the first experiment where the rate was 20 this equals k times 1 times 1 squared this means that k must equal 20. We now need to look at calculating the units for K. We do this by looking at the units for the rate and the units for the concentrations. For the rate, it was measured in moles per litre per second. And for the concentrations, they were measured in moles per litre. The first thing you need to do is to cancel any units that are on either side of the line here. So we can cancel the moles per litre with this one here. And then that leaves us with the units that we need to use. If the units are on the opposite side of the line, you can transfer it over exactly as it is. So the per second would then cancel. If the units are on the same side of the line, you need to invert them. So here we have mole squared. So that will be per mole squared. And per litre squared, so that will turn into litre squared. This means that our final rate equation is rate equals 20 times the concentration of A times the concentration of C squared, where K equals 20 per mole squared, litre squared per second. Here's an example for you to try. First of all, write the rate equation, then calculate the rate constant using the appropriate units. Let's have a look at part A. 
calculating the rate equation. So we need to have a look at doubling the concentration of each reactant whilst holding the other one constant. If we double the concentration of Rx, so from experiment 1 to 2, the sodium hydroxide has been kept at 0 0.1, we can see that the, the rate doubles from 0 0.15 to 0 0.3. So we know that our rate with respect to Rx must be 1. If we then have a look at sodium hydroxide, looking at experiments 2 and 3, where the rate where the concentration doubles for sodium hydroxide, but the Rx is kept constant, the rate does not double. This means that for sodium hydroxide, the rate is respect of 0. The full rate equation would be rate equals K Rx. For part B, we're going to use the rate equation. Rate equals K times Rx, and we're going to calculate the rate constant. So if we use experiment 1, where our rate is 0 0.15, and that is K times 8.0 times 10 to the minus 4. This means that K will be 0 0.15 divided by 8 times 10 to the minus 4. So k will equal 187.5. We now need to look at calculating the units. So if we do this like before, where we have rate equals k times rx, our rate was measured in moles per litre per second, and rx is in moles per litre. You can cancel the moles per litre from each side and then transfer across the per second. This means that your K is being measured in per second. Because the rate equation shows us the rate determining step, we are able to work out the reaction mechanisms from the rate determining step and the full reaction. For this reaction here, we have 2NO2 plus F2 giving us 2NO2F. The rate equation shows us that one molecule of NO2 and one molecule of F2 are involved in the rate determining or slowest step. All of the steps in a multi-step reaction need to add up to give us the final equation. So for this reaction here, we're producing 2NO2F. A step that would be consistent with the rate equation and with the overall equation for the first slowest step would be NO2 plus F2 to give us NO2F and an F atom. We can then bring in the second molecule of NO2 and react it with the F atom to give us our second molecule of NO2F. The two F atoms cancel as they're on opposite sides and then everything else can add up to give us our overall reaction. Here's a reaction for you to try. The overall reaction is 2A plus B to give you 2C plus D. The rate equation is rate equals K times A times B, and I need you to write a multi-step mechanism that is consistent with this rate equation. In this reaction, the slowest step involves one molecule of A and one molecule of B. This should give us a molecule of C plus some intermediate X, which can then go on to react with the other molecule of A to give us another molecule of C and finally D. This allows us to cancel X. We have 2A and a B to give us 2C and a D. I hope that you found this video on kinetics helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim for updates on new videos when they are produced.